So let's look at some of these transposition examples. So we're going to do some examples of transposition for instrumental or band style. So if you are a BA, a BME, or a BM performance with a wind, brass, or percussion emphasis, this is the transposition style that you'll be expected to do for your proficiency on May 18th. I've given you some examples here to practice. I'm hoping that you'll get quick at being able to figure out what the strategy is that works the best for you with that transposing instrument. I'm hoping to make you feel more comfortable with playing those two parts together. You'll be asked to play a transposing instrument in one hand along with a non-transposing instrument in the other hand. So there's reading and there's coordination involved. For your proficiency, the example for transposition will be sent out on Monday, May 18th, and it needs to be submitted by the end of that day. So you do have a little bit more prep time than at site, how it normally is. When you are preparing it, we are not looking for fast tempo. We are looking for a steady tempo. Accidentals are key, so making sure you've got the correct accidentals in your transposed instrument and correct accidentals in your non-transposing instrument and correct rhythm with that steady tempo. The other thing that I want you to make sure that you check is your register. In both your transposed and non-transposed instruments, make sure that you've looked to see if you're above or below middle C. I've heard plenty of examples of beautiful transposing work or non-transposed parts, and they're not in the correct register. Most of the time, your hands are gonna be close together on these. It's as if you're reading a band or orchestral score, usually with closer harmony, not so much an instrument playing with accompaniment. So on your PDF file, if you pull up on Canvas for instrumental practice examples, this is the first page that comes up. And I'm gonna take a look at both the first and last example on this page with you to help you get a head start on this. From there, I'm hoping you work through these examples. Another good resource for examples is remember that website, pdmpiano.org. Go to the table of contents anywhere between chapters seven and 12. You can pull up examples that'll say clarinet in A, clarinet in B flat, trumpet in B flat. You can pull up some specific keys to do too. If you want me to hear any of your work on this, you can easily send me clips, or if you'd like to have a little mini lesson together, uh, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, and work on these, happy to do that too. So please reach out if this is not making sense to you or you're struggling with this. So the top example that we're gonna look at is for clarinet and B-flat and bassoon. So with your instrumental transposition, you can expect to see clarinet and B-flat and clarinet and A. So we wanna become comfortable with both of those transposition skills. You also might see trumpet and B-flat, so it will work the same way. So if your clarinet or trumpet is in B-flat, it means that it's going to produce a pitch that is a major second lower than what you are visually seeing. If it is a clarinet in A, it's gonna be a minor third lower. So when you set out to work on your example, the very first thing I would do is take a look at your non-transposing instrument and investigate the key signature and figure out what key it's in. Make sure that you look through that melody of the non-transposing instrument, checking to see if it's major or minor. So if I'm looking at this first example, I can see the bassoon has the key of B-flat major. As I look through, it's starting and ending on a B-flat. I can be pretty positive it's in B-flat major. Set up your scale in B-flat major then for your clarinet in the register that it's going to play in. In this case, it would be on that third line B-flat. As you know, I always encourage you to build that scale with two hands, leaving all your tones down so that you can see specifically where those accidentals are. Once you start reading your clarinet, you're gonna have to remember that all E's and B's are flat. So from there, figuring out where you're gonna start. I wrote the beginning of it on my whiteboard here. It starts with a concert C, so the pitch would be played would be a B flat. From there, I can continue reading a major second lower, C, D, or I could read it by movement, B flat, step up, step up. Try it both ways. You'll find which way you're more accurate. So if I was going to read through the entire clarinet part of this top example, I'm starting on that B flat above middle C, stepping up, stepping up, skip down, up a fourth is going to take me to E, and I know that all E's are flat, down, 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 up, up, down, rest, that 
that next phrase is going to start on a D, stepping up to my E, which I know is flat, stepping up, skip down, up a fourth to my G, skip. So there would be my clarinet part all the way through that first example. Once you're comfortable with that, adding my bassoon part, again, you might want to check out that B flat scale. Make sure that you are down on second line B flat, not up on the B flat top space next to middle C. So in this case, my registers for my two instruments is quite far apart. So when I put it together, I would have That would be that complete example. At the bottom of your page, you have an example with horn and F and trombone. So let's take a look at that one. Following the same strategies, I need to change my reading because your horn is gonna be playing a perfect fifth lower than what you're seeing. So I would follow the exact same strategies. My bottom instrument, my non-transposing instrument is a trombone. Again, my key signature looks like B flat, but if I take a look through that melody, the range seems to be going from G to G. So it's in minor, so it's in G minor. I might want to set up a G minor scale for that trombone, and I probably want to set up a G minor scale for my French horn as well. When you are ready to start reading that French horn part, again, go from your first note, set that up. I see a concert pitch A. Hearing a sound of perfect fifth lower would mean that I'm going to hear a D. From there, again, some people find it easy to think a perfect fifth lower from every pitch that they're seeing. Other people find it easier to read intervolically and in remembering what you're gonna need for your key signature. So my French horn part would end up being D, G, G, a, A, B flat, A, G, G, C, C, B flat, B flat, A. So when I put that with my trombone, again making sure my trombone is reading bass clef, So as you work through these instrumental examples, I do give you some examples of clarinet in B flat. Um, there is on the third page a clarinet in A, and there is some French horn. I, if you are using the pdmpiano.org, I know there are some E flat saxophone. E flat saxophone will not be one of the choices on the proficiency. So please concentrate on B flat clarinet, B flat trumpet, a clarinet and F horn. If you need some extra help with this, please, please reach out. I'm happy for us to schedule a little mini lesson together on it. Best of luck.